10 years ago, the Know Your Stats campaign uh, was born. And the reason why it is so important is because June being Mental uh, Men's Health Awareness Month, prostate cancer awareness through the American Urological Association's Know Your Stats campaign is crucially important. And the man to my right is physical proof of that. 10 years ago, he was uh, diagnosed with prost prostate cancer, and you look great, Mike well, Haynes. Good to see you, Pro Football Hall of Famer Mike Haynes. Well, thank you. You know, I always enjoy being seen. I know. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> being here rather than being, I guess, seen in that respect. Yeah. I, I've heard that joke before. So uh, it was 10 years ago you got the news. How old are you right now? Um, 64. So at 54, you go to the doctor and you get this news. Is that what happened? Well, not actually. Um, you know, it went to a screening at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And um, at the time, I actually worked at the NFL. And so they asked me to go take a look and see how the screening is going. So I go over and these two ladies, cute ladies, um, said, hey, why don't you participate? Maybe encourage some of the other guys to do it. I said, all right. So I'm, all I know is a simple blood test. Well, there's another part of the test that I didn't know about. Uh, it's called the digital recto exam. And so um, before I had the digital recto exam, the doctor called me in said, hey, um, does cancer run in your family? I said, I don't know. My grandfather died of some kind of cancer, but I don't know. Um, and, he's, and he said that um, one in nine men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime, and African Americans are more likely to get the disease in the general public. And if it runs in your family, it's even more guys are going to get it. So he gave me enough information that when I got home, I was, called my primary care doctor and had a conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, um, oh, I left out an important part of that story. When he called me in, he also gave me the digital rectal exam. That's why that's the other part of the test that you have to do. Um, and so when I got back home, called my primary care doctor, he looked at my chart, gave my new information. He says, well, you know, I think you're fine, Mike, but since you're African-American, let's get you a biopsy because that's the only way you can tell for sure. Not going to ever find out at a screening. The only thing you can find out is a screening that something may be going on with your prostate. Uh, well, my biopsy came back positive. I had cancer in nine of the 12 places that mm. they checked. Yeah. So what are the stats that you need to know, basically? Well, I'd say the most important stat you need to know is if the cancer runs in your family, prostate cancer. Because if it does, you want to have a conversation with your doctor early on, maybe in your early 40s. I know guys have even started earlier than that. Um, but if it doesn't run in your family, you can wait to your mid-50s. Most men are going to die with prostate cancer in their body. Guaranteed, you have it in your body right now. But your body is tolerating it. It's, it's managing it. And you have to be aware of what's going on. So if those numbers get out of whack where something needs to be done, you want to know about it in the early stages when it's easily treatable. And I found out by luck, by being in the right place, having this conversation with the doctor. Um, and I don't want men to find out the way I did. I want to be a little bit more proactive and looking for something like that. That's really what our campaign is about. Knowyourstats.org to find out um, and uh uh, more information, and I'll, I'll just give some right here. One in five, you, chance of you having prostate cancer is one in five if you have a family history. So that's 20% right yeah. there. One in six if you're African-American, and then one in nine for those who fall into neither category. Yeah. So know your stats and get, get checked out. Uh, Mike Haynes here on the Rich Eisen Show, Pro Football Hall of Famer. I turn to you and ask you what how, how the news of Terrell Owens saying, I, I, I'm not coming from my induction ceremony hit you and, and others that you might have been speaking to about this? Well, you know, it hit me like a ton of bricks, really. Like, I'm shocked. Um, it is the greatest honor that T.O. can receive as a football player. And um, it's the greatest honor I've ever received. And everybody feels the same way. And I remember the day that I met uh, a lot of those guys, um, Nitsky and uh, Deacon Jones, and they're, they're telling me, Mike, you've just joined a team that you can never be cut from. You can't even die off of this team. Uh, and I started to, at that point, start to realize what was actually going on. This was, it was not just another big sports banquet, you know? This is the greatest honor you're gonna ever have. So when I heard about T.O., I thought, there's gotta be something going on. I don't, there's gotta be more than this, to the story. I don't have all the information because this is not something you want a guy like T.O. to regret. Um, this is one of the greatest moments, and he'll be talking about this like, come on, I was inducted in 97, mm -hmm. and I'm still proud to wear this jacket. I'm still, when I'm introduced um, as a Hall of Famer, it still means a lot to me, and it means a lot to football fans and people in this country. How long did it take you to get in? Four years? Four um, times? Four I've times? got in on my third time. And so, like to, if, so if, it's, that's, if that's it. Just like T.O., by the way. Yeah, if time. that is the deal, then um, 
then I kind of understand how he feels. But I don't remember it anymore. And I, I was voted um, to the, the all-time NFL team, first team. So everybody said, oh, you're a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, and so I wasn't. So then the next year, I said, well, I guess they made a mistake. Matter of fact, that first year, Joe Horgan actually called me. No, you know, no. Uh, like I said, we want you to be back in your hotel next to the phone. Uh, it's not like today, obviously. Uh, so the phone rings. He goes, hey, Mike, it's Joe Horgan, Pro Football Hall of Fame. And then someone must have said something to him. He goes, what? Oh, oh, oh. And he hangs up. Oh. And I went, whoa. So I sit there waiting for the phone to ring again. It never rings. So I go back to my meeting, and everybody in the meeting is aware that I wasn't inducted because they had given the list of the guys who had made it. And where I was, I couldn't see that. And so um, I do want to just interject so here in the, wild in, in the middle of the story, just a Joe Horgan uh, pro football hall of fame. He's been there forever. And it yeah. was his job for many years to call up those to say that you're in. I this may be the sweetest guy on planet earth. Yes. So yes. I, 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 I know you're telling your story for perspective, right? Not to make sure that you're, you're, you're not throwing. Joe I appreciate that. I just want to yeah. make sure of that. Cause I know you and I know Joe yeah. and I just want to how people might perceive that. But all that said, I mean, what message would you give to, to T.O., I can sort of figure it out what you're saying, but I just, you know, yeah. put the, it the, out there in a the way. The message is whatever, if you if there is an issue, you know, then let's let's get it out there because we can maybe we can help solve this problem. If it's not being a first ballot guy, take a number. How many guys um, think they should have been on the first time and they didn't work out that way, including myself, who was an all time NFL first team player and didn't make it. All right. Take a number. I also don't have a vote. So if there's a bunch of Hall of Famers that you don't like or whatever, I don't have a vote. And if I did, you'd have been in. You're going to be in. I've always said that you're going to be in sooner or later. Don't worry about it. But the Hall of Famers don't have a vote. The, um, the people at the Hall of Fame don't have a vote. The people in Canton, Ohio don't have a vote. You know, and all three groups absolutely want to be with you on that day. It is going to be the greatest day uh, in your life, I think. Uh, and um, I'd, I'd hate to see him regret, you know, not being part of that celebration. Mike Haynes here on the on the Rich Eisen show. Your Super Bowl championship season, uh, Super Bowl 18. I mean, you know, we're in Super Bowl 53 right now. It's yeah. amazing, yeah. right? Um, that was the famed Marcus Allen pirouette run right. uh, in the Raiders beating the Redskins. Uh, and by the way, that was the 1983 season. Next time that the uh, that the, the AFC won the Super Bowl was Super Bowl 32 when yeah. the Broncos won. So it was, a, it, was yeah. a, it was quite a long drought for the AFC. What was your perspective on that run? Did you see it live? Were you in a defensive huddle or something? I, like no, that? I was on the on the sideline, and um, I was just I could not believe. What I really couldn't believe is after that run, he just walks away. He doesn't put his hands on his hips and put the ball down and huff and puff. He just ran like a hundred, looked like 150 yards, you mm -hmm. know, and. Um, he just gave the ball away and uh, and started walking back to the, our sideline. Like, wow! I'm, I remember running out to the field and con, you know to congratulate him, like a lot of other players. Um, but one of the greatest plays I've ever been around. Who was the toughest guy for you to defend, Mike? To be honest, they were all tough. And uh, that's I, you know, not the honesty I'm looking for. Uh, well, I'll be very, very honest. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. I well, mean, but you when got? I when I say that, because yes. I've actually put my guard down a couple of times and I really gotten embarrassed. Um, you ever heard of a guy named Guido Merkins? I do not, no, sir. Uh, I think he was a third-string quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. He beat me for a touchdown in the L.A. Coliseum. <laughs> and you remember to this day. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. And why? Is because we were beating the New Orleans Saints so bad, I kept looking at the sidelines going, Willie. And uh, Willie Brown was our secondary yeah. coach. I said, Willie, take us out. Take me out. Yeah. You know, why, are we, why am I still in the game? He goes, oh, just stay in a few more plays. Then here comes Guido Merkins into the game going, oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, now they're bringing these guys in. He beat me for a touchdown. And so there's a message there, really. It's like if you're in the National Football League, if there's a player in the National Football League, he is there because he can get the job done. If, if Guido Merkins is out there running pass routes, mm -hmm. it's not to kill time. That guy can catch and he can run and he deserves to be out there doing that. And so um, they all gave me fits. And I prepared for each one of them like they were the best to ever play the game. Of course, I didn't study for Guido. Didn't even <laughs> know if he'd be playing. But the guy who probably gave me the most... Um, hardest time, I'd have to say, it was Harold Carmichael, oh, uh, yes. just because of his height. He's too, he was just yeah, he was six eight, big, right? Six eight, and 
You know, there's nothing you can do. The ball's up in the air. Who's going to out jump who? Come on. 50 50 right yeah. there. That's more like 70 30, 80 <laughs> right. 20. Only chance sure. I have is knocking it out of his hand as he's bringing it down. Right. And then, you know, when it all when it all comes down to it, uh, Mike, um, just so you know, you, you were one of, I believe it's Guido Merkins. Uh, you were one of his three career touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. There's Thanks, a, Rich. So you, you, gave, you, gave, you gave him a cookie. Yeah. Um, and, and I have to ask. And we still talk about him. <laughs> well, the things we also talk about from that day, too, is the famed Lester Hayes stick yeah. him. Did, yeah. you, did you never uh, I didn't dip have into to. the stick him? No, I didn't have to. What a lot of people don't know about Lester is he was a lineman as a youth football player, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, when he was in college, he was a linebacker. And so he never really was in a position where they're used to touching the ball. Uh, but when he came to the Raiders and you know, the, he, he was able to make plays, but he wasn't able to catch the ball. And Freddie Bolitnikoff used to use a little stick him very, you know, gingerly, you know, he's oh. have a little pocket on the side that he would make with tape and put the stick him in there. And every on his sock. Uh, it's, yeah, he had a tape, special tape job on his sock, and they put a little pocket in there, and he put the stick in there, and he, he re reached down and touched it, and then he'd use it on his hands like this, so it's just on his fingertips. Yeah. That wasn't enough for Lester. You know, Lester would go over to the jar yeah. and just put it all over himself, and <laughs> I think they even have a picture of him catching a, uh, making an interception with the ball stuck to the back of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> he also has a shot of him, like, holding his hand up like he looks like Freddy Krueger, like yeah. Wolverine. Like, it's yeah. just, it's, it, it looks like he's got knives coming out yeah. of the top of his finger. But an incredible player. You know, incredible player. Sure. And uh, after playing on the Patriots for seven years and then going to the Raiders and making Pro Bowl six out of those seven yes. years, yes, sir. you would think I had – nothing else to learn. I got to the Raiders, I had plenty to learn. And it was really great having Lester on my team because he was a real student of the game. And we sit there and look at film. I learned so much from him, you know, because he was a youth football player. He looked at the game a little bit differently from me because he had so many more years of football under him, you know. Um, and um, then with Willie Brown and the, the bump and run technique, and mm -hmm. I learned a lot from him. So uh, last thing for you. Um, on your jacket, what's the number in your jacket? Because it's every every single person gets number one eighty six. You were one eighty six. Yeah, you were in Shriney one eighty six. Yeah, that's again just To is going to be in Shriney three hundred or what have you. It's going to yeah. be, and that's inside a jacket forever. Nobody right. literally can take that away from you. No that's one can take that away. Come on, To, and so so you you know you. Um, uh, there's a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to do some homework. Okay. And I actually, I'm here in L.A. I'm hoping I get a chance to talk to you while I'm here. Um, because maybe the NFL needs to change the way we do our parties for the Hall of Famers. You know, instead of it being um, something that the player does, maybe it's something that the league does. And then they divide that by 32 owners. The cost of whatever that party is, it's nothing. And it, maybe we shouldn't be, um, you know, guys – not wanting to come because of the financial um, burden that it might cost. I, again, he has not stated a specific reason as to why, other than the fact that he went to Canton, he heard the mission statement and said after hearing that, he just wants to do this as opposed to what everybody else before him has okay. done or is expected of anybody else who is enshrined or selected for that. I honestly don't know, but I, I'm more than happy to reach out and maybe hook the yeah. two of you guys up. I'd love that. That'd be great, Rich. At Mike Haynes NFL on Twitter. Again, knowyourstats.org. Your life or the life of a loved one depends on it potentially. Good yeah. to see you. Love having you. you here. Thank you, man. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.